in the Buddha factory. Form without a body, body without form. Where we start and where we end. You remember ascending the hillside in the green expanse of afternoon, mist drifting off the ganglia of mulberry, a few pink blossoms already exploding, quavering in the low wind. In the temple, the abbot fished in his robes for his cell phone, surprised at such ringing in the world. In a cloud at the top of the mountain, you found a staircase leading down to a fat statue, leaf golden moss, mouth open, laughing. So difficult to tell what is genuine. You saw hundreds of them, like that one, arranged for display in the showroom. Rows of them, in various postures, washed in the commodious tinctures of commerce. Bodhisattvas, male and female, some with red fingernails waiting to be sold to resorts in Las Vegas. Nearby, the world's largest Buddha is being assembled in a shed like an airplane hangar, its nose about the size of a Learjet. You can't help but bow and mutter prayers. It's good business, the manufacturer says, his own father a believer. You couldn't know you were here to prepare for the hard silence ahead. When someone close to you labors for breath, flesh dimmed, an insolvent spirit, the nurse feeding him morphine, an ampule an hour, one eye lolling open as if to see beyond the light. Then there's you rubbing a spot on the top of your head looking away at a normal face on TV to distract yourself from death's disheveled taxonomy. Outside, in the jaggy water of the marina, boats lull at anchor, repeating the sea's endless detachment from the weight of its occupants.